and once again we are berry picking for like the fourth week well we are back picking berries but it's a different kind this time we're picking cherries and i'm up standing on a ladder trying to reach as many as i can off of this tree i'll show you here in a second as you can see here these are all black cherries and there are tons this is the first year we've actually had anything to harvest and there's tons they're not too hard to get off fortunately they're just really high up they're just really high up when we look straight up you can see there's tons of little black cherries up there well i'm finally back at the tree that i really want to pick this is a tree that we found last night while we were harvesting cherries and i said i need to come back today to pick this one for juice because Unfortunately, the apples are all falling off this and they taste amazing. Well, I didn't do too bad. That real full bucket is the ones that were from off the ground. And then these beauties here are the ones from off the tree. And look at that. Look at that. That's like, I'm not even going to use that for juice. That is totally for eating. Gorgeous apple. Well, guys, this week has been exceptionally slow to get started. I know it's been berry picking and cherry picking and apple picking and not a lot of really doing a lot with that sort of stuff other than throwing it in the freezer. But today we're about to change that because we're going to take those cherries that we picked, the black cherries, as well as the sour cherries that I picked, and we're going to make some cherry syrup. So let's go for it. So basically what we're working with here is probably about four liters of uh, fruit. Uh, I didn't actually measure it, but we're going to measure the juice once we're done that. And that's how we're going to determine our recipe. So basically in the pot it goes. And it really doesn't matter if there's stems and stuff in this because we're going to strain everything out once we've made our juice. But right now we want to get this covered. Uh, just a little bit over top of the fruit with water and then we're going to simmer that and once again we need to bag up some more berries another decent sized bag now this one ended up only about three quarters full but there's still more berries to pick so maybe we'll go back and get more because you can never have too much fruit. So it's almost bedtime. We're halfway through week four now of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, but we're doing some prep work because tomorrow we're making Cajun rabbit stew and that requires beans. Usually uh, the recipe calls for kidney beans, but we don't actually grow kidney beans. So we're going to be using our red cranberry bean and we're going to try out using some dried Scarlet Runner beans. This is new for us, so hopefully it works wonderfully but they need to soak overnight. So that's what we're doing now. We need two cups of beans and we're gonna cover them in two inches of water. And then in the morning, they should be good to go. Well, we are next day now. As you can see, our beans have soaked up a lot of that water and really quite expanded, which is awesome. I'm excited to use those uh, Scarlet Runner beans because we have a lot of them coming this year. But James and I are hard at work now cutting up all the veggies for our Cajun rabbit stew. He's working on our crooked neck squash or zucchini, whichever you happen to have. And then we have to go out and gather up some celery and onions. And uh, as you can see here, got some tomatoes, but really, let me get this big guy. Oh gosh, I don't even know how much that weighs. So thank goodness this recipe does call for some tomatoes. And you'll be seeing the rest of those go into the freezer for next week because my friend Angie and I are again going to have a canning day and we're going to be making some sauces. And it's so great to put those tomatoes in the freezer first so that you can uh, then unthaw them and get all that extra juice out. We're going to get going on cutting up all these veggies. We're not going to bore you with the details, but once we are ready, I will come back and we'll go over everything that's in this stew and uh, get it cooked up. Oh my goodness. I just went out and picked celery for this recipe and... Not only are we lettuce farmers this year, but I think we're celery farmers. We've never grown celery like we have this year. And I know it's been the perfect year for lettuce and celery and things, but still, I'm gonna take this one because this is pretty awesome. And Alex is hard at work squishing out our cherry juice so that we can get this cherry syrup made. Look at how much juice you've managed to get out of there. We needed eight cups and we're just about there in that big eight cupper uh, measuring thing. 
So I think this last little squeeze is gonna get us just what we need. Well, we have been working away on getting all the ingredients ready to get this recipe started for you. And I wanted to briefly talk about the tomatoes. Now, the tomatoes in this recipe, you need two liters of tomatoes, basically, whether you use tomato juice, canned tomatoes, chopped fresh tomatoes, doesn't really matter, but you need two liters and then probably a little bit extra just to make sure you've got enough liquid. But one thing I'm going to say is it's up to you whether you peel and skin those tomatoes or not. We're choosing not to because we're using some big tomatoes for this. So really the skins are not going to be that substantial. James is giving it the thumbs up because he weighed it and this was over one and a half pounds for just this one tomato. <laughs> and this isn't the biggest one out there. There's one that's got to be like twice the size. I'm so, don't give the thumbs up again. <laughs> I'm super excited. <laughs> He's going to do it. I'm super excited to weigh the one that's out there. So hopefully, <laughs> so hopefully that will come on the next video. But I just wanted to say that we are chopping our skins right in through the food processor, chopping it up, no problem. All right, so James and I finally have everything all cut up and I'm gonna quickly go through the recipe here for you because this is a wonderful stew. Now we make ours with rabbit meat, but you could use chicken, that's up to you. We just happen to use a lot more rabbit than chicken here. I'm going to use my cheat sheet to read it to you. And uh, basically I'm gonna read a single recipe, but I'm actually going to be making this times four and pressure canning it. So what I'm reading you here would be just a single recipe to make a big pot of rabbit stew. Uh, so without any further ado, here we go. So you need one large zucchini or as we're using here, you can see our crook neck squash, two stalks of celery, then one small onion, four cloves of garlic. Garlic is a big one in this one and don't cut yourself short because it is very important. 14 ounces of tomato juice, which is basically the jar. 14 ounces of chicken broth, so basically a can of chicken broth. Then we have one red pepper, three cups of shredded chicken or rabbit meat, and basically the last ingredient on the big side of things is your kidney beans. And as I showed you earlier, we are using our Scarlet Runner beans and our red cranberry beans, extra salt, pepper, fresh parsley, which I have in the food processor here so that uh, I can put that in right at the end, and uh, Cajun seasoning. Now, as you can see, our jar here is a little slim, so I need to make some more. So, for our Cajun seasoning, now keep in mind, I'm going to be making a lot more than one single batch here, but I'm going to read out the ingredients for one single batch. So you need two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two and a half teaspoons of paprika, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, oregano, one and a quarter teaspoon, and thyme is also one and a quarter. And last ingredient is a little bit of red pepper flakes, which again, we are not huge fans. The recipe says a half teaspoon. We're doing a half teaspoon for the whole jar because we are not huge fans of super spicy. And then I just shake it up. And there we are. So now that you're up to date on everything that is in this wonderful stew, we're gonna get cracking on making it. I'm not gonna take you through too much of the details. Basically, you're bunging everything in the pot. Uh, you can change things up as you see fit. And we're going to pressure can it at the end. So I'll just kind of fill you in on little spots here and there. Now, the one thing that I didn't mention was after we soaked these beans overnight, I did also cook them for 30 minutes uh, on the oven. Now, I wouldn't have done that with some of our other beans, and especially not ones that were already canned, but these were, I'm gonna say it, they just seemed a little bit firm, and I'm a bit concerned that they won't get soft enough. I've never used the Scarlet Runner beans, so this is a first for us. So. I definitely did cook them for 30 minutes on the stove first, 
simmering them um, and hopefully that will keep them really nice for this stew. So basically I'm going to just put in my uh, seasonings now. If you're doing a single recipe it's a half teaspoon of kosher salt and one teaspoon of pepper for a single recipe. And for a single batch it's two tablespoons of your Cajun spice. Now at this point you could put some more red pepper flakes in if you so choose. You make this as spicy as you like. Unfortunately, my rabbit is still a little bit frozen, so I'm gonna have to put the lid on that for a moment. But now, tomato, all our chopped up tomatoes, and our homemade chicken broth. And remember, you don't wanna cook this for too long, you just wanna get it to a boil, then jar it up, because you're going to be pressure canning this, and the meat portion is already cooked. Doesn't it look pretty and healthy? Home cooking, right from scratch. We're just putting that in there. It could have been worked up a little bit finer, but it will be just as tasty. So pretty. All right, it's getting late again, as always. I seem to say that a lot in these videos, but we're finally packing away the rest of those tomatoes after making our Cajun rabbit stew, which I also recognize. I haven't shown you the finished product of that yet, but it's actually not out of the canner yet. So when I get it out of the canner, I will show you these gorgeous jars of the uh, Cajun rabbit stew. But what I want to show you first here is this little tip that I love to do with my tomatoes, uh, especially your big juicy, um, uh, I guess you'd call them slicer type tomatoes because we can't eat all of these, especially since we're trying to watch how much bread we eat. There just isn't a way to eat all these slicers that we've got. So basically what I'm doing here, if you can see it, is I'm doing a take out the core like that. So you've got the core out and then all I'm going to do is make a little X across the bottom. As I mentioned before, we do have a video on this, which I have already kind of linked above. But I'm showing you anyways because I'm just that kind of girl. Um, but that's basically it. I throw it in my freezer bag and we freeze these. So it usually takes, a, I, I recommend at least 24 hours, maybe 48 in the freezer to make sure that they're good and frozen. But then when you defrost these uh, to use in some sort of canning later, you can take all the juice out of them and you just get that pulp. So if you're making something like pasta sauce or ketchup or barbecue sauce or curry sauce or anything like that, it's wonderful because it cuts your cook down time by like two thirds. It's, it's wild. So definitely give it a try. I'm gonna get the rest of these finished. Oh, here we are. That's what was left that was ripe. And we used a whole bunch in our Cajun rabbit stew. I didn't actually calculate how much that uh, big bowl was, but I will do it by the end of the video. Anyways, I'll be back tomorrow. Well, we are starting to round off the week and I feel like I haven't quite got as much achieved this week as maybe I have in previous weeks, but I'm still going to keep chugging along. There's just been a lot of things that have kind of interrupted the flow. But today we are getting back to that cherry juice that we did and strained the other night and we're going to uh, get that made into syrup now. Now, basically what you need is eight cups of juice. Now, I let mine sit in the fridge so that the sediment sat to the bottom and then scooped out my eight cups. I was actually a little bit short, so I added half a cup of water, but that's not a problem. It's pretty strong tasting stuff. I did try it, so uh, happy with that. Now, this recipe for the syrup does call for 10 cups of sugar and one carton of uh, pectin crystals. And uh, I know that sounds like a lot of sugar, but this is a syrup product. And keep in mind, we use this in drinks and on pancakes and things like that as a treat. This isn't a regular jam or something like that. So we're going to get busy with this. We're going to basically get it somewhat warmed up before we put the pectin back in because this has been really cold sitting in the fridge. We don't want to boil this, but we are going to warm it up. Then we're going to add our pectin crystals and get it boiling for one minute and then add our sugar and get that to a full boil again for a minute and then we're going to jar it up. So my jars are already sterilized and in the oven and we're gonna get busy on this. All right, so our canner is up to boiling and we need these to boil for 10 minutes in here in our water bath canner. So 
while we are waiting for the jelly to finish up in the water bath cannon, James and I are chopping up our uh, yellow crookneck summer squash and putting this in the freezer. Basically, we just chop it, lay it on a cookie sheet, and flash freeze it, and that's all we do, and it works perfectly. Granted, it won't keep long term unless you vacuum seal it, but it does work wonderfully for what we use it for. All right, so there we have our big bowl of cut up squash. Thanks to all my helpers. It may have been a little bit more than we could have put on this tray or should have put on this tray, but there we are. I see some quality control is still required. A few pieces are a little big, but that's basically our process. We're going to pop this in the freezer the same way we do all of our fruit. It's just going to flash freeze and then we will bag it up. Well, we have been dying to do this job and we've been picking apples all week, which you've seen in the videos here. And finally, we have four five gallon buckets. Now these are roughly 23 to 25 pounds in each bucket of apples. And each batch of our juice takes about 100 pounds of apples. So we're going to take you through this process, but we're going to do the quick condensed version here. If you're interested in watching the whole process, we do have a video on it, which I will link above. But for right now, we're chopping apples in half because they're about to go through the wood chipper. All right, first bucket of apples is cut up the ones that needed to be cut up, ready to go out to the chipper. As you can see here, that's sort of what we're looking at. Basically, they have to be small enough to fit through the little slot. I'll get Chris to show you when he takes this out to do the chopping. We have got the press out and uh, it's all washed up. This is one of those things that uh, it sits there for a large portion of the year and doesn't get used. So it tends to get a little bit dusty, but it is set up and ready to go. And our other tool is this little wood chipper, which uh, we featured before. I'll link that video up above. And uh, it makes a really quick job of all these apples, as you can see in the bucket. These are all uh, cut up to a size that will fit into the chute so that we can uh, basically grind them up and uh, press them in a moment. It's dark. I can't see anything on the screen, but I am finished with my last round of uh, apples to be chopped up. So I just have to press and then I can go in the house. Real homesteading. All right, so we are next day after pressing all that juice. It was about 10.30 at night by the time we'd had dinner. I was not doing juice. So we just put this in the fridge, let it sit, and we're getting to it today. Now, one thing that you're going to want to do is make sure your jars are sterilized and ready to go because this is quite a quick process when it gets to happening. But we have our pot on the oven and we're heating this. Now you do not, I repeat, you do not want to boil this. You only want to bring it to 190 degrees. Well, this is a very important fact. Do not boil your apple juice or you will have apple cider or something that tastes very similar. It has a completely different taste than the fresh pressed juice. And somebody is already sneaking in to enjoy some that we put away for a snack. Fresh right out of the press last night. As you can see, hopefully you can see it, we are just about 190. So we're going to set our timer here. We need to keep it at 190 for five minutes. Now it's time to jar this up. Once again, make sure those jars are nice and sterilized. I usually leave a half inch head space, give or take a little bit, it's not a big deal. You want to try and keep your juice at the 190 while you're canning it up. And one thing to remember is to turn it down slightly as you start to empty. There we are, and into the water bath canner. And there you have first seven jars in the canner. These need to come to a boil and then they need to can for 10 minutes. Doesn't matter if it's pints or quarts, it is 10 minutes in the canner. Then we're gonna get those out quickly and we are going to move on. So we are finishing off the week with a nice relaxing job. We are dehydrating some of our yellow pear tomatoes. We love these tomatoes for on pizza. 
I'm going to show you here. This is our last year's. We had an amazing harvest last year of yellow pear tomatoes. And yes, we still have lots, but you can always use more. So we have a surplus right now on the vines and they need to get used up. So this is what we're doing with them. But all in all, I think it's been a very productive week. Even though it doesn't show it as much on the table today with canning items, we did do a lot of freezing and berry picking and all sorts. But we managed to get 18 liters of apple juice all canned up. That was such a fun family project. We enjoyed that. I've got the uh, Cajun rabbit stew and the cherry syrup in the middle. And one thing that I didn't even really showcase in things as we were making the apple juice, all the leftovers from the press, not all of them, but basically I made apple scrap vinegar. Now we don't use this for us, but this is great for the livestock as a replacement for apple cider vinegar for, you know, just general health and well-being of the animals. So we'll be making a lot of these this year. Each one of these produces about a liter once I strain it out, which is wonderful. And I did actually put uh, some from last year in each jar just to give it a little boost and a head start. But looking forward to having lots of that in the stock room for the livestock as well this year because we can't just think about ourselves in every bit counts. So anyways, hopefully next week we'll be full of wonderful stuff. We've got tomatoes coming out the wazoo and yeah, I gotta figure out what I'm doing with that because there is no room in the freezer for them. So stay tuned because we're gonna be working our butts off for the last week of August and it's probably gonna go right into September, but we'll see how we do.